Welcome, everyone. I'm Dr. John White, Chief Medical Officer at WebMD, and you're watching Coronavirus in Context. Have you been hearing about the boosters? Are we going to need a booster in the fall? I'm not so sure. And to help provide some insights, I've gone to one of the experts, Dr. Rachel Presti. She is an Associate Professor of Infectious Disease at Washington University, St. Louis, and an author of a study that looked about the durability of the mRNA vaccine. Dr. Presti, thanks for joining me. It's nice to be here, thank you. Well, let's get right to it because everybody wants to know how long does immunity last? Am I gonna need a booster? Does it protect against the variants? Your study recently came out in the journal Nature. I want you to describe it to our viewers and what you found. So what we looked at was people who had gotten the um, Pfizer vaccine. Um, so I wanna be very, very clear that the only vaccine we looked at was the Pfizer vaccine. So we looked um, at people who were eligible to get that vaccine very early. So um, started enrolling people in December, January. Um, and we looked at two different things. So initially um, we looked at blood um, and looked at the B cell, produce, the antibody cells, producing cells, the B cells in the blood um, over, over time. Um, and then in some of the participants, um, we also looked at what is happening in the lymph nodes. Um, and, um, and what we found was um, in the blood, you see good antibody responses. That's already sort of been seen um, in, in all of these vaccines. Um, and, and the interesting thing um, that is potentially relevant is that it looked like even in people who'd previously been infected with COVID, there was a boost, there was an increase um, in their response um, in the blood um, after getting the vaccine. So, um, so there's been some discussion about whether or not if you've had COVID, if you still need a vaccine. Um, I, think, I think this would suggest that having a vaccine is a benefit. What period of time did you look at? So, so starting in December, and then we have data through um, about um, March, April. So, um, so 12 weeks or so, about three months after people had been fully vaccinated. So after they'd gotten their two doses, um, we, we started looking in the blood. And what did you um, include? This is exciting. Okay. This is the exciting. Yeah, yeah. So that, that is what we saw. Was we saw that um, people had nice antibody responses, um, but that they also, even more importantly, had, um, had um, B cells in their blood. So antibody producing cells in their blood. Um, and we saw that those were sort of lasting um, through that time period. That's not something we see with all vaccines, correct? So, you know, um, in the blood, we do. Um, what we what we would expect to see um, with any vaccine is that you get antibodies that are produced in the blood, and then you expect those antibodies in the blood to go down. I think the second and more important part of the what we did was to look at the lymph nodes, and what we saw in the lymph nodes was um, antibody producing cells in the germinal centers of the lymph nodes, and the germinal centers are kind of like training camp or um, or school for B cells. And, um, and what we saw that was sort of surprising was even 12 weeks after the vaccine had gone in the arm, we were still seeing um, in, in quite a few of those folks, we were still seeing these cells in the lymph nodes. Um, and what's important about that is the lymph nodes are where your antibodies get better, right? Where they learn how to bind better, where they learn how to make a broader response to variants. So what, what's the bottom line? Because some people are saying you can interpret this data, even though it's based on 12 weeks, that the durability, the vaccine, the mRNA vaccines could provide protection for years. Is that what we can conclude? Maybe even a lifetime for those people that have been previously infected with COVID. Yeah, so immunology is still one of those fields where we know a whole lot more about what happens in animals than we do what happens in humans. But the whole point of the immune system is to make an immune response that lasts your whole lifetime. And so I think we get very focused on what's going on in the blood because that's easy to, to see, right? But what your immune system is supposed to do when it sees a pathogen is it takes that to the lymph node 
it makes a really strong immune response. And then after that, um, the really good cells will go to the bone marrow and they make those memory cells that are supposed to last your life. So we're still trying to figure out the bone marrow part. We don't have that data yet, um, but we should hopefully have that soon. Um, and, but what we're seeing in the, in the lymph nodes is they're making a really good response. And I think that's promising that we might have a response that's gonna last for a long time. How long is a long time? You know, we've only known about this virus for a year, a little bit more, well, a year and a half. So, so um, scientists don't like predicting the future, um, but I think, I think it's likely that this is gonna be a durable immune response. The caveat to that is what is the virus gonna do? Sure, with the variants um, and, and mutations. Yeah. But could one reasonably conclude from your research that the vaccine effectiveness for the mRNA vaccines could last for years? I think you could. I think it looks very promising that, um, that you at least make an antibody response that is likely to last um, for quite some time. So Dr. Presti, a lot of people are excited about this research and, and it may show us that we don't need boosters. We need a little more time to tell. But others will say, Dr. Presti, it was a very small study. How do we know that this information is, is going to hold up? This study gave us a tremendous opportunity that we haven't really had um, to see how does your immune system work to a new virus and to see it in extreme detail, right? So we were able to look in the blood, but also in the lymph nodes and hopefully also in the bone marrow. Um, and that's important data. Well, some encouraging data about how long the mRNA vaccines may provide protection against coronavirus. Dr. Presti, I want to thank you for the research that you're doing to help provide answers to the questions that we're all having. Thank you very much.